Still ahead on TVC Breakfast, what exactly is the role of arts and culture in relations between Nigeria and the United States? That is coming up next. Stay with us. Now, four days have been set aside for arts and culture lovers to be thrilled here in Lagos at the Ake Arts and Book Festival. The Ake Arts and Book Festival, in case you don't know, is an annual literary, cultural and arts event held to showcase the very best of contemporary African literature, poetry, arts, theme, music, as well as theatre. Well, the music and the, uh, for the very first time, rather, time since its establishment, the sixth edition of the festival will hold here in Lagos, like we said earlier, and it starts on uh, October the 25th and span to the 28th. The U.S. Consulate will play an active role in the festival as part of building stronger arts and culture relations with Nigeria. And joining us for this segment is visiting U.S. Arts Envoy, Wanjiru Kamuya. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. And Thank you. Yeah, and with her is Russell Brooks of the Public Affairs Office of the U.S. Consulate. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so my first question should be directed to you. How can arts and culture really be used to drive the uh, relationship between U.S. and Nigeria? Oh, great question. First and foremost, arts is a means of building greater mutual understanding. We see it as a tool to share ideas, to share information, and by utilizing that tool, we'll have a much greater understanding of the relations between the two countries and hopefully bring us all together. So you have brought in the world famous Wajiru Kamuyu. Yes. All the way from the States, right? Oh, well, is it from actually, France? That's a bit Africa. of a misstatement. Uh -huh. Wanjiru, do you want to explain where you're from? Yeah. I know that she's from um, um, Kenya, right? I'm Kenyan-American. Kenyan-American. Yeah, having lived in Kenya, born and raised in Kenya, mm -hmm. and lived in the U.S., and now I live in Paris. So in I came Paris. from Paris. From Paris. Yeah. I, I was actually trying to be mischievous because you learned ballet in Nairobi. Exactly. So we want you back in Africa. So mm -hmm. we're going to hold, we'll be holding on to you for no a bit quite longer. <laughs> no problem. <Yeah. laughs> I'm always happy to be on the continent. Yeah. But tell us more about the Arts Envoy program, why you've brought her here. Well, the Arts Envoy program is a worldwide program that the U.S. State Department sponsors. Mm -hmm. We bring over 200 uh, various artists uh, to different places around the world. They will be performing artists, visual artists, there will be filmmakers, there will be writers, etc. The value in this program is it gives international publics an opportunity to engage with American um, uh, artists mm -hmm. and who in these publics may otherwise never have an opportunity to do so. So this is a great uh, bridge building tool that the U.S. government has utilized for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me come to you now, Wanjiru. Uh, you participate in, in some uh, arts and uh, arts displays, um, uh, exhibitions in Abuja. So since you arrived to Nigeria, really, and from what you've seen so far, uh, what would you say are the relations between the arts community in the U.S. and Nigeria, and what sets them apart? I don't think there's any setting apart. Mm -hmm. I think you find talent everywhere in the world. So that's just a given and I had a really good time in Abuja with 15 dancers there mm. yeah. working on choreographic and technique and somatic um, techniques in order to keep their bodies as healthy and their longevity in their career as long mm. as possible with healthy bodies so I wouldn't say there's a, a difference I would just say that talent is everywhere so I just bathed in it. I have you learned it. to do the shaku shaku dance? No, uh, imagine I haven't. Oh, come yeah, on. I mean, imagine, like everyone has said that and then I'm like, Lagos. where? Can you teach me? No, you're in Lagos, don't worry. <laughs> okay, so it, it'll happen. It'll happen. happen. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. super. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting. So we understand that you'll be performing at the opening of the 
Ake at Zumba Festival. Uh, what exactly should Nigerians be looking forward to? Uh, will you be dancing? Will you be teaching dance? Uh, for that, I will actually do an improvisation, a dance improvisation. Mm. So that's all. That's, uh, it's whatever happens in the moment. Okay. To a, a, to a select piece of music. All right. So, yeah. Russell, who are those that are targeted? Who are the target audience and who are those that will benefit generally from this program? Okay. Excellent. In terms of the immediate beneficiaries, uh, one will be working with uh, students of dance, um, especially for underserved communities. Mm -hmm. She'll be working with uh, professional dancers here as well. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the broader audience, we want uh, as wide uh, a number of Nigerians to be familiar with not only what she brings to the table in terms mm -hmm. of this uh, greater understanding between Nigerians and Americans, mm -hmm. but in terms of the fact that uh, Americans are interested in mm. Nigerian culture, and I'm sure she's going to take back ideas um, uh, from this experience. Uh, we want Nigerians to understand that the U.S. has a range of cultural programs, not just in dance, but in music and um, film, et cetera, that we share with Nigerians on mm. an annual basis. So in essence, it's going to be like a, an exchange of cultural ideas. That is the purpose. Okay. Uh, we've seen a couple of um, workshops she's conducted in the past few days. Um, of course, um, we also understand that there are quite a number of cultural exchange programs uh, between the U.S. and Nigeria and a couple of other African countries. How well would you say that this program has performed oh, over the years? I think it has been one of the uh, little-known successes of uh, U.S. public diplomacy. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that we can bring artists such as Juan Juro, or if you look back in history, uh, the visits by, say, a Louis Armstrong mm. around the world as one of the jazz ambassadors. We've seen that uh, culture has been a, a great means by which uh, the United States has shared uh, its history, mm -hmm. its uh, culture, but importantly, its values and its principles around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, some countries that uh, may have difficulties with the United States on a political front, um, nevertheless have proven themselves to be quite welcoming to American culture. Mm -hmm. And that way, or through that means, uh, these publics in these countries have become much more familiar with the United States again, our culture and our values. Okay, so uh, Bojuru, what impact uh, do you hope that uh, the series of workshops you're going to be facilitating would make the long run and short run? I just want to come in and I always ask the dancers, what are they seeking? Like, what is their desire? So I come in knowing a few things, but I always, I like to come into any community that I'm working with and ask what they need and then tailor my workshops around that. So hopefully they get what they desire and what they need from, mm -hmm. that, from our discourse, and therefore the workshop is then tailored around that need. Mm -hmm. So that's fine, Abu Jabi had a really good time. They <laughs> okay. were very excited, and hopefully I'll go back, actually. There's I'm just wondering how much African flavor you still got in your dance. Are you trying to throw, are you trying to, are you trying to, what you, are you trying, are you, are you trying? You know, because you seem to have crisscrossed the world. You've, got, you've lived in America, you currently live in Paris, Mm. And then, do you still have the Kenyan, you know, African flavor? Is this is it still a tigra in your art? Yes, for sure. I mean, I in my work, it's contemporary work as mm. we are in contemporary times. But it is mixed in and fused in with ballet, okay. with buto, which is a Japanese uh, uh, dance form as well, okay. as well as aesthetics from the diaspora and the continent of Africa. That's mm. very close to me. So. Mm. Yeah, you will see it in my work. You will see you see it in my body. You see, just simply by me being, it's, <laughs> it's there. It lives. Mm -hmm. it's so you, right. you you live and breathe. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Russell, uh, what is the level of involvement of uh, the U.S. Uh, consulate in this project coming up? Well, we're our principal sp uh, partner okay. in the Yaki uh, uh, Book and um, Arts Festival. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Uh, obviously, we've uh, arranged for Wanjiro to come and participate. And um, also you'll see that a number of American writers are also coming to participate in the mm. festival this year. Mm. I think it's approximately 13 uh, American authors are going to uh, talk about their work. And just as she, uh, that, that's an opportunity to engage with uh, a foreign public that otherwise may not be familiar with them. Mm. Well, let me come to what you very quickly and find out exactly uh, where you draw your inspiration from. I can't mm. tell really if you're making a lot of money from dance from across <laughs> because it seems to be more destined what you're wearing. But how much how much money has this brought to you? 
and does that inspire what to do as well? Money never inspires me. Hmm. I live from my passion. Beautiful. And my passion then opens doors to the necessary income. Mm. So the so passion eventually brings the money, that's what you Exactly. Mm. As it brought some money. Yeah, I mean, I just don't believe that one should live their life around trying to make money. It, the money will come if you live passion, if you live your passion, if you're here for the purpose that in which you are, your feet have been placed on this earth to do, then the money will come. I, the, the, side, the business side of dance can be really um, challenging, especially the, the more and more. I've been in the business 18 years. So the more and more you're in the business, the more challenging the business end becomes. Because yes, dancers are the stepchild of the arts. Mm -hmm. And you are paid the least. You are least respected. You are least valued. The first program in any educational system that goes if they're having budget, budgetary issues is dance. Why? Mm -hmm. It's not as valued. Shame. It's a shame, but it is, is the reality the same, what it is. Is it the same thing outside Africa? Yes, exactly. Okay. And so you fight against this all the time and you negotiate as best as you can. However, there are moments where you take a contract that has a lot of money and there are moments where you take a contract that has less money. Mm -hmm. And it's not always about the money, it's also about that bigger picture. So the smaller contract can actually open doors. Absolutely. Can open doors to the other, to the, the contracts which will bring the money. So I think the mistake is to always, it, it would be to Going look at money, 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 money. money, money. Picture. Yes, yeah. look at the bigger picture because that small contract can really be the okay. consequential domino and effect. And looking at the big picture mm -hmm. really, how uh, strong is dance in itself to uh, help uh, the less privileged, you know, bring out children from the slums to, uh, you know, toward the right path, especially in Africa where it's quite difficult for the government to put so many things in place. So does dance have that uh, uh, movability uh, influence on the young people? Yes, I mean, there's a group here called Dream Catchers. I think they're evident as to how powerful mm, dance is. Mm. You know, just in and of themselves, being who they are and using dance as a platform to for a catalyst for transformation for themselves and to express the Nigerian culture and also gives them self-esteem and self-confidence. Mm. That in and of itself explains why the importance of dance mm. is, needs to be valued, uh, mm. you know. And if I could add to that, uh, Again, dance is a tool by which these young people will feel a sense of empowerment. They'll feel a greater sense of self-confidence. Uh, maybe that'll keep them in school. Maybe that'll uh, demonstrate to them that if they pursue dance long term, there's a career there. Or maybe that's a means by which to get them to university. I think that is something that should not uh, uh, be forgotten or overlooked. Uh, the value that dance will have in um, instilling that sense of confidence in these children, regardless of whether they become professional dancers. Mm. Rosel, so tell us, what other programs does the U.S. mission uh, in Nigeria organize to promote cultural relations between the U.S. and Nigeria? How much time do you have? <laughs> 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 All right, so i just name a few. Uh, so just upcoming here in Lagos, mm -hmm. uh, besides the Ake uh, uh, Festival, we're going to be participating in the upcoming uh, Lagos Photo Festival. Okay. Uh, we'll be a partner in the African International Film Festival. Again, we're utilizing these to both share American culture and also to uh, build stronger ties. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of our other cultural and educational exchange programs, um, I think you know that we have alumni even in TVC that mm -hmm. participated in our International Visitors Leadership yes. Program. That's right. In Lagos, we have uh, uh, alumni of our Humphrey Program. We have Fulbrights, uh, both in Lagos and in the southern region of Nigeria. I could go on and on, mm -hmm. but uh, these programs all uh, contribute toward capacity building here in Nigeria. They contribute toward uh, uh, building the strong ties that exist between our two countries. Okay, and talking about uh, building these strong ties, especially around arts, you know, the two of the two countries, uh, would you say that it's been a two-way arrangement, kind of, not just the U.S. now bringing in, you know, bringing its resource people, uh, persons, sharing ideas, but about opening up the opportunity for Nigerians, because, you know, we have rich culture, we have many artists doing so many things, and taking them out there and put them, putting them on the US, U.S.'s platform as well for them to meet your people mm -hmm. in your country. Oh, absolutely. It is an exchange, okay. two-way. Okay? It is great 
when Americans come here to share their experience with Nigerians. It is also fantastic when Nigerians go to the United States, uh, participate in the program there, and meet U.S. publics and explain to them uh, different things about Africa or about their specific country. Unfortunately, many Americans have not traveled to Nigeria or other parts of Africa. They are also curious mm -hmm. as to what are the facts about these countries. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the Nigerian representatives that visit the United States uh, can provide some of that information, some of that insight, can correct some of the uh, uh, misinformation that might exist. Mm -hmm. And that also helps Americans, that helps us if, if we are policy makers, mm -hmm. but also just helps average, everyday Americans understand their greater world. Mm -hmm. Wajiru, I wish I could, we could just take you away from your chair and then <laughs> play your music and see you dance for us. But uh, you started performing uh, 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 dance arts outside the shores of Africa. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell us uh, what you know, a prospective African student can look forward to in terms of the influence, the curricula, the opportunities for studying outside, especially in the United States. For studying in the United States, your curriculum, I mean, you could do a bachelor's of, on the university level, you could do a bachelor's of fine arts, you could do a bachelor's of arts, you could do a master's of fine arts, a master's of arts, and you could do a PhD in dance education. Mm. So there's a wide mm. range of what you can do. And the curriculum can range between, there's always uh, um, theoretics, and then there's always practicals. The practical. So you have technique, but you also have theory. Mm -hmm. So those are all infused in your program. Mm -hmm. And depending on what your interest is as a dancer, will, ta will be tailored around which school you choose to go to. Mm -hmm. I went to Temple University for my Master's of Fine Arts. And then I, at Eastern Michigan University, I did a Bachelor's of Business Management, and I minored in dance. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and then went to New York and, and began my career. And we will be putting uh, the prospective students that would be, I'm talking about those that would be participating, you know, at the festival through all of this because uh, there are so many Nigerians out there, Nigerian students out there uh, that are getting attracted to dance by the day and they want to study outside. So would you be sharing not just, you know, the dance techniques and all of uh, everything of information about arts alone, but about, you know, uh, doing what you love while going to school? Yes, that's possible. I mean, you get that. You, and I don't think, I, I, always, I also tell dancers here on the continent, there's no need to also always go outside now. Mm. We have resources here now and programs here on the continent that you can go to. I taught master classes in South Africa. That's a really hotbed for getting good training. University of Cape Town has a dance department. University of Makerere in Uganda has a dance department. So, and there are others, you know, Burkina Faso is a land filled with dance. Can you get mm. to the zenith so within the shores of Africa? Can you get to? To the zenith. You, for instance, career. you mentioned PhD in dance education. Yes. Can you achieve all of that within Africa? I think you, I don't know about the PhD. I know of the bachelor's you can. You may have to go outside if you want to do your PhD. I'm not sure about the PhD, but your bachelor's you can definitely get here on the continent. Would you plan, uh, would that, is it possible for you to uh, come back to Africa, maybe to uh, take up a lecturing career, not on a full-time scale, of course, so they can share these ideas uh, uh, with the younger generation coming up? Per, me personally, yes. that's not my calling. My calling is to be here on the ground with the dancers in workshop experiences. Okay. Uh, to be a lecturer in a university is not really to where I want dance, to be. To teach dance, not, I'm talking about the arts now, you know, to teach Even, it. I mean, I, if I go into a situation, a university situation, it's on a part-time <laughs> basis. Okay. Because okay. after that, and I can't be the artist that I am. Mm -hmm. I can't travel the world with my, my, my dances and my, my art. I can't do other people's uh, uh, art. I can't be in other people's pieces because mm. I'm I'm engaged and committed to, to teaching at the university level mm. so I like to be able to diversify I like to I love to teach so I will teach um, part-time I love to give workshops I work with a dance program in through the United States in Paris mm. but that's part-time mm. and that gives me leeway to do then what I need what I love to do which is work with other choreographers and and also work on my work mm. um, 
Yeah. You mentioned earlier that you will be performing to some songs of the Ake Festival. I was hoping if you could tell us your playlist. I have and no idea what the playlist <laughs> is. Will it feature some Nigerian songs? Probably. You should uh, lend probably. the Shaku Shaku. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to lend the, the Shaku Shaku. <laughs> 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 out of the bag here. Oh, I mean, I think you'd be, you'd be excited to know that I did the Broadway show Fela. So wow. I think that, that would, that'll tantalize the, the okay. audience. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, Russell, uh, we've been talking about dance, really, but what about uh, books? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't want to say that uh, it's been said that Niger most Nigerians don't like reading books because I know most Nigerians like reading, maybe okay. not all Nigerians anyway. So what kind of program do you think uh, maybe the government can put in place and the U.S. Uh, consulate can assist the government or Nigerians with to make reading attractive? Well, I generally as a diplomat don't like to suggest what the government here should do. That's what I'm saying, that, that the, like really, a program. That is really something <laughs> for them to decide. Okay. What I will say is that reading is important, mm -hmm. is extremely important, not just in Nigeria, but anywhere in the world. Um, to the degree that I read statistics about uh, the uh, lack of literacy in different parts of Nigeria, that is a problem. That is a problem that should be addressed if Nigeria is going to achieve its dreams of becoming a more developed country. Mm -hmm. You can't do that without an educated population. You can't do that unless your young people uh, embrace uh, education and the technology that is driving our future. Mm. I know from having uh, encountered Nigerians during my time here, they have fond dreams of what they believe their country can accomplish. Mm -hmm. And I agree with them. The country has fantastic potential, not just in terms of oil in the ground or the agriculture that can be produced here, but in terms of the human capital that exists here. That human capital must be invested in, okay? And so, yes, young people or just people in Nigeria, mm. period, Absolutely. need to be encouraged to read. Uh, the rates of literacy must be increased. And if Nigerians are pursuing that goal, I am certain the United States will be a good partner for them. And Wanjiru is a very exemplary sample for Africans, mm. uh, you know, an entertainer mm. who's gone for a master's, you talked about even having bachelor's in business and all of that. But we learned that you featured in The Lion King. Tell us your experience as we round up. That was a wonderful experience. I auditioned six times. I always tell dancers, it doesn't wow. come just like this. Huh? Wow. It doesn't come six just, yeah, times. six times over three years. Okay. Wow. Yeah. You kept going uh, back. I kept going back. I kept going back. I kept going back and finally landed the job, mm. you know, and it was a, it really was a dream job. I w the first time I saw Lion King in, on Broadway, I was like this, I have to do this show. This oh. show I must do, you know? <laughs> so, and I did it in Paris. So I did it in a language also that I really love as well. And then invite a new home, you know, it became a new home mm. so it was really wonderful to be in Lion King it was one of the first experiences where there was like this huge red carpet and all these celebrities coming and it, it was really really and see? that's the one that's the first time my father said my daughter will be fine because wow. parents always have this thing about you should do you should go the traditional route mm -hmm. so okay. my father was really concerned you know he's, he's a Kenyan father uh -huh. he was very concerned <laughs> my mother An always African said father. she yeah my mother who's african-american <laughs> said she may do this for the rest of her life oh. but I told him I said you know Lion King was wonderful but urban bushwoman with whom I danced for which was socially mm. politically and spiritually involved through dance mm. that was amazing mm. that he should have had comfort in as well mm. you know those mm. years were, a, were pivotal for, for my dance career mm. so Lion King yes was a commercial big glittery uh, per, uh, performance and wonderful three years that I had so I, w I would do that show again in a heartbeat yeah Wajiri <laughs> Kamuyu Wajiru Wajiru <laughs> what does that mean Beautiful black one. Oh uh, my! The Kikuyu people. I should adopt Kikuyu. that. Uh -huh, the Kikuyu <laughs> people. I'm That's also the, the president's tribe. Yeah, president. yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, and we're. All, I'm also one of our Agikuyu and Mombi, who's our Adam and Eve. I'm mm. one of their daughters. Oh, wow! I see. And the name means beautiful black one. It's been a beautiful experience. <laughs> Thank you. Know, you. Talking with you, at Jiro. Thank Art, you. U.S. Mission you. Arts on Voice. You'll be performing at the yeah. Ake Festival. Mm -hmm. I have to be there. <laughs> I hope you come. Yeah. Do come. You're welcome again to Nigeria, and I hope you enjoy Lagos. I am so Your enjoying it. First time in Lagos, right? It's first time in Nigeria, so I'm very wow. excited to be here. Yeah, yeah, Ruzo Brooks is the public affairs <laughs> 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 officer of the U.S. Consulate Lagos. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you Thank for you inviting me. Glad to have you around always.